What does Asmongold's hairline, solo queue, and the arcane dream have in common? They still don't exist in 9.2. But like anything in life, you can find some budget replacements. For all of you solo queue hopefuls, the next patch is giving us the solo shuffle, and you probably have some questions. Well, today we have some answers as we predict the best and worst classes for this new game mode in 9.2. But before we get into it, we want to know from you, how did you feel about Season 2? Are you excited about the new patch? Let us know in the comments below. While you're at it, let's quickly break down how Solo Shuffle works. It is a solo queue system similar to skirmishes, but instead of one arena game, you will play six rounds of arena total. And in between each round, teams will be shuffled so that every possible matchup can be played. This means that you will have different partners each round, which of course can feel pretty chaotic. But because this is a solo queue system, it is up to you and you alone to carry the game offensively and defensively, which starts by assuming your team is bad. Maybe that sounds a bit mean, but it can help you understand how to play the format and why some classes might fail. In order to be good in solo shuffle, you need to carry defensively, which means having tons of utility, off healing, or spam CC to help your healer. And on the offensive end, ideally you should be able to end games on your own, which generally involves having reliable CC with plenty of burst damage. And with that in mind, let's get into the worst melee for Solo Shuffle. Unfortunately, DKs fall short again in the new game mode. Their team utility is fairly limited. Outside of AMZ, they don't have many reliable options for carrying the game defensively. And even though their kill setups can be deadly in organized 3v3, they really require coordination with team-wide stuns in order to close out kills. Enhancement shamans are in a similar position. Even though their utility is much better than DK, they just lack the kill potential needed to take targets down on their own. With most of their kill power being tied to doom wins and without a reliable stun, their offense can lag behind as their damage falls off slightly outside of cooldowns. Rounding out our weakest melee, we have Fury Warriors. Look, we know there will be at least one person in the comments right now telling us just how bad we have undervalued Fury all expansion, and we totally get it. But their main weaknesses in organized arena will punish them even harder in solo queue, as their relative squishiness makes it difficult for them to actually keep up pressure, as stacking their mortal strike effect requires high uptime. And since solo shuffle is basically a Russian roulette of healers, you can't bank on getting the support you need every game. And with our weakest melee out of the way, it's time to look at some wild cards. Starting with Rogue, you might think having an abundance of stuns and CC would work well in a solo format, but the strength of Rogue is its ability to elevate other classes through coordinated setups, which doesn't happen often in solo shuffle. That doesn't mean Rogues are bad, but rather they don't really have the ability to carry games on their own, especially defensively, where they are relatively squishy into the other melee cast. Windwalker monks are in a very similar position. On paper, you might assume that a class with ridiculous burst damage would work well in a format based on burst damage, but a glass cannon is only as good as its healer, and one of the biggest limitations is just how fragile they can be when getting trained. Although they can survive on their own, it might be difficult to actually do damage without a reliable healer to keep them aggressive. And finally, Survival Hunters round out our solo shuffle hopefuls. They might just be the most underrated specs in the entire expansion, with some of the most consistent single target damage among every class in the game. The place we think they might struggle is in their ability to reliably land CC. Of course, Harpoon Trap is their bread and butter setup, but in a chaotic format with almost no coordination, the chances of the trap breaking to random damage is significantly higher, making win conditions a bit more limited compared to other melee. And with our wild cards out of the way, it's finally time to move on to the big boys of Solo Shuffle. Starting off with Feral Druids. Of course, Feral has been one of the most consistent melee DPS all expansion, especially after buffs to Necrolord, which turned them into immortal tanks. This makes them really good in any solo queue environment, as their passive durability is only elevated by their ridiculous off healing potential. All of this combined with some of the best control and consistent damage in the game, and you have the makings for an amazing solo spec going into 9.2. Trailing behind Feral Druids are Rhett Paladins. Ah yes, who would have thought that hybrid melee would dominate a solo queue format? Anyway, it should come as no surprise that Rhett Paladins fill this slot as they are utility lords, and even though they might lack good control options, they still have some of the best burst damage of any class ever, meaning they can easily finish off games with a high roll Divine Toll Cast or Vanquisher's Hammer. And speaking of being able to finish off games on their own, Demon Hunters are likely going to shine in this new meta, as their front-loaded damage is more than enough to take down uncoordinated teams. The raw strength of Metamorphosis might be too much for inexperienced players to handle. 
While their peeling options are fairly limited, the utility of darkness and reverse magic will do really well in the format, where coordinated defensive usage is basically non-existent. Moving on to casters, we have... Uh... Oh wait, never mind, we still have arms warriors. Obviously, you should know by now that ARMS is arguably the strongest melee in the game, and they have synergy with practically every other class. And since Solo Shuffle pairs you up with random teammates, being a jack of all trades is pretty good. Seriously though, with enough utility and control to carry defensively, and enough offensive power to steamroll games with their partners, Warriors are looking solid for Solo Shuffle in 9.2. And speaking of the patch, we're hard at work updating all of our class guides and commentaries for the new season. For prices as low as $4.99 a month, you can get instant access to over 700 videos designed by some of the best players in the world. Yes, for prices as low as a Twitch subscription, you can get thousands of hours of instructional content that is proven to increase your rating. Don't believe us? No worries, we have a money back guarantee if you don't see the rating gains you were expecting. So don't delay, for the best instructional experience WoW has to offer, check out skillcap.com today. Moving on, we have our worst casters for Solo Shuffle, with the first title of Trash being awarded to Affliction Warlocks. Yes, unfortunately, Affliction probably won't perform too hot in this format, especially considering the rework to Death Bolt in 9.2. Without good burst damage and with a high chance of getting locked down every game, it is unlikely that Warlocks will be able to do anything meaningful in this game mode. Although Gateway and Health Stones do give some strong team utility, that assumes your team will actually use them, which is a hard ask in a solo queue environment. Arcane Mages suffer a similar fate. Even though they have a decent amount of tools to keep themselves and their team alive, they suffer the biggest caster problem in Shadowlands, which is the fact that they actually need to cast. And good luck landing casts in the most chaotic game mode yet. Not to worry though, because there are still some funky alternatives if you play these classes, including Destro and Demo Warlocks. These alternative specs have a few advantages over Affliction, mostly that they are able to actually end games on their own. This is especially true for Demo with their infamous Decimating Bolt Legendary combo, which allows them to deal massive instant cast damage to catch teams off guard. Frost Mages are a step up from Arcane for similar reasons. Even though they are still limited by the need to hard cast most of their damage, it comes with the benefit of being on a different spell school, making it easier to manage interrupts. And with the raw strength of Necrolord combined with Ice Form, Frost actually has some kill power to complement its CC. And speaking of having damage paired with healer CC, both Marks and BM Hunters are also looking decent for the format. Even though they have limited utility options, they more than make up for it with their raw damage, with Marks having insane bursts during cooldowns and BM having some of the best consistent damage. And on that note, Elemental Shamans round out our wild card range DPS. Although their kill potential is a bit limited on their own, they make up for it with utility and control, where Grounding, Tremor, and even Hex are enough to carry a weak healer. And with our wild cards out of the way, it's time to move on to the cream of the crop. Unsurprisingly, Fire Mages will be doing really well in Solo Shuffle, since a lot of the things that make them strong in Organized Arena will carry over to the Solo format. Obviously, their control is nearly unmatched, and with one of the best offensive cooldowns, they are truly able to dictate the pace of the game both on defense and offense. For similar reasons, Balanced Druids will also do well in the game mode, with more than enough control to carry their team defensively. They also come with one of the easiest CC combos in the game to execute, with Root Beam being an effortless way to swing momentum in most matchups. And finally, rounding out the best range DPS for Solo Shuffle in 9.2, we have Shadow Priest. Once again, the same things that make them strong in organized arena will easily carry over to the solo mode. With tons of utility options like mass dispel, life grip, and off healing, they are well equipped to carry the game defensively. When you combine this with some of the best consistent damage and one of the most reliable CC combos, you have the makings of a great solo class in 9.2. Finally, it's time to move on to healers, starting again with the worst of the worst. This will require us to change our criteria slightly, as healer balance in this mode is a bit different than DPS. Generally speaking, being a good healer in this format requires being able to contribute to kills with CC or damage, and having the tools needed to survive without peels, while also being able to keep teammates alive with limited resources. Unfortunately, Monks will struggle the most, as they don't really offer strong offensive tools for their team. Although Leg Sweep and Paralysis can be used to set up kills, their relatively long cooldown makes these spells relatively inefficient. Although they can survive stun setups on their own with Port, their healing will become a bit more limited in the late game, as dampening stacks 33% per minute starting at the 2 minute mark. 
Disc Priests will also be limited by their mana bar. Although they will work better offensively with powerful tools like mind games, they don't really offer much in the late game, where their mana bar runs drier than a handful of saltine crackers. Perhaps the biggest limitation to Disc is that they have very limited synergies with other classes. Without RMP or a hybrid DPS to prop them up, they will likely suffer at the hands of randomly generated teams. Moving on, we have one wildcard pick with a spec you might not have expected. Holy Paladins are looking surprisingly good in the format. While their overall performance this expansion has been a bit rocky, their toolkit is really well suited for this solo environment, where they can just slam multiple defensive cooldowns to avoid instant gimmicky losses. They also bring some considerable kill power with reliable damage on top of a stun to help their team end games. And this brings us to the end of our journey as we look at the remaining healers looking strong for solo shuffle. It should go without saying that Resto Druids are probably going to shine in the format, given that they are the healer that is best at, at well, you know, healing. Although they lack meaningful damage, they have a variety of ways to help their team line up kills, and just like Arms Warriors, they can pretty much play with every class in the game, which makes them incredibly valuable in randomly sorted comps. Moving along, Resto Shamans will be an offensive powerhouse in Solo Shuffle, and will be able to carry any comp offensively with Purges, Lava Bursts, and the infamous Earth Ellie Legendary. With offense being such a huge part of this format, having a Resto Shaman on your team is one of the best offensive assets. The only thing that might hold them back is their own survivability, which can be fairly limited when Trinket is down. Without a Shadow Priest or Warrior on the team, they might find it difficult to deal with getting trained. And finally, if you've been keeping count up to this point, you already know Holy Priest rounds out our best healers. You might be asking why they are such a massive step up from Disc, and a lot of it has to do with their superior offensive toolkit. Having the additional CC of Chastise allows them to contribute pressure more reliably compared to their disciplined counterparts. On top of that, with Holy Ward, Greater Fade, and Divine Ascension, Holy Priests have much stronger defensive tools for avoiding damage and surviving on their own. And with that, we have our final picture for the Solo Shuffle meta in 9.2. Keep in mind that this is mostly a prediction based off PTR testing and overall game balance, so your mileage might vary depending on your current gear and experience when playing the format. Anyway guys, that wraps up for today's video. We hope you learned something valuable, and if you're looking for more WoW content for the patch, please consider subscribing, and be sure to check out skillcap.com slash WoW, where you can find courses and commentaries for every class in WoW. As always though, thanks for watching, see you soon.